Hello, everybody. Got a number of people joining. I'm so excited to talk to everybody about utilizing strengths with families and community today. So as you guys are joining, thank you so much for joining our Thrively webinar. I'm Jeanette Simonson with Thrively and very excited to bring um, this idea of a strengths night and how we can really elevate the conversation with our families as we talk about uh, the strengths, the interests, and all of the things that make our students unique. So as you're coming in, I would love it if you would uh, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from. Um, I am coming to you from the south side of Denver in Colorado, and uh, I've been an educator for almost 20 years now. Very excited to um, share with you some of the things that um, we've been doing with our clients, but also really talking to you all um, about some best strategies that we can use um, as we start to engage our, our families. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are, are starting to have um, thoughts, whether you're doing parent-teacher conferences or um, you're getting ready to have conversations with parents about the success of the students. So we're going to bring to you a number of um, things that are available to you. We're going to be putting um, some information in the chat. And what I'd love to do is send out to everybody who's able to share their information with us um, some useful toolkits and things that you can do to use for strengths nights, or even if you want to run like a strengths day in your classroom, invite some families in if you would. But uh, I love it. I see a lot of people coming in from all over. We've got people from Arizona and Washington, California, Texas, Wyoming. Excellent. Welcome, everybody. Oh, good. Your son is in the Army, Colorado Springs. Excellent. Sunny day here in Colorado, always. Um, but we're going to be talking today a little bit about how can families engage with the student strengths. And as we start to talk about what Thrively does and what we lead with, um, we want to extend that out to families and certainly to think about community engagement strategies, whether it be from um, an industry partnership or um, engaging, you know, certain people in the community to coming into the classrooms. Um, we want to bring that community project piece. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how project based learning can be brought into the classroom through Thrively. And then we'll talk about additional surveys and support to help support you and your students and making sure that the climate and culture is continuing to be as great as it can be. So I'm going to just jump right in. And for those of you that may or may not have been using Thrively before, um, just to kind of give you that high level view, we are an asset based whole child learning platform. And so, you know, SEL is, is the word on the street right now. Um, we do certainly have some social emotional components to this, but as you see here, we're really talking about who these students are. And as you see from the number of students that are here, we're looking at, oh, aspiring to be an architect and interested in creative arts or aspiring to be a dancer or an animator. And so here, um, notice that the parents have been added or you can invite the parent and you can invite the parent two different ways through email or through a uh, text message. So as we start to extend that offer out to families, they start to get familiar with what questions we're asking, what we're learning about their, their children, and also to be able to give that two-way conversation back and forth so that families can engage and find enrichment opportunities that help, you know, kind of guide the student into the things that they're interested in. So as you can see, we've given a couple examples here. You know, um, Jaime's family can engage in the enrichment activities that allow him to explore being an architect. Maybe we connect them as we talked about, um, you know, with community and engagement projects. But certainly as you think about what kind of camps and different things we can do, this is also an area. So we can see through just the strength assessment, this is a 30 minute assessment that students take. They'll be asked what they're aspiring to be. So I, I like to say, what kids think they want to be, because obviously we have a lot of exposure to do throughout um, their K to 12 years, um, but also what they're interested in and then what their strengths are. So we're gonna jump into our strengths for a moment and kind of show you these beautiful pictures. Now, when a student takes the 30 minute strength assessment, they get five, their top five strengths and they're able to see, okay, in this case, the student, and look at her bright smile, she's so proud of herself. She's verbal, a creative thinker, and has really good memory. And um, my client who did the strengths night uh, for the first time last year, they had these shirts made up and they could you know, put these little decals on and it would say, I am, and she would pick a strength that she wanted to focus on um, for that particular day or week. 
Um, but as you can see here, and, and I will make sure that this presentation is available to all of you, but we also wanna jumpstart strengths conversations at home. And so this QR code, if you're scanning it with your phone right now, you can certainly grab that or you know when you got the presentation, share this with families. And this kind of gets them engaged in how did you use your verbal strength today? Instead of, you know, what happened at school or what'd you learn? And I tend to get nothing or I don't know or something like that. I've been starting to ask my students two questions. And uh, I'm sorry, my children, two questions. You know, how did you use your strengths today? And what did you do to use them? And they'll usually tell me something. You know, I used my verbal strength to help support, you know, a, a student who didn't understand something. Or I asked my teacher if I could use my verbal strength. Um, I also like to ask the question, who did you help today? And, you know, I think in our in our world right now, we're really seeing um, so many things happening. And so to really focus on how we can be empathetic and, and supporting. So as we start to share this with families, those conversations happen at home as well. Um, you can also see from this picture, and, and this is called spend a coin, and we'll make sure you have this lesson as well. Uh, spend a coin you can see from this picture, it's like a, it has all the 23 strengths on it. And if you were to host a strengths night, or you were to do this in your classroom, students would come up and they grab a little dot. Our families could do this too. And they grab a dot and they'd say, well, this is, this is one of my strengths. And this is one of my strengths. And then you start to see the whole community and the breakdown of where our strengths lie. And it really gets into these conversations of, you know, how are you being utilized? And I like to use the example, my, my strengths, I don't have analytical as one of my top strengths. I'll just say that I'm, I'm a creative thinker. I'm a big thinker. I'm verbal. And so when I go to do detail oriented work, I go to find somebody who's analytical. And I like to have that kind of um, collaborative space to where I have, you know, some other strengths from other people. And so when students start to think about this, they can look at the board and go, oh, you know, so-and-so has a strength that I don't have. I'm going to pull them into our group. Same thing can happen with families. And sometimes families have similar strengths and sometimes they don't. So I don't know how many of you know this, but um, the parents can take the strength assessment. So just like our staff and our adults can take it, we can extend that offer out to parents. And what this particular uh, client of mine did before, this was the photo booth that you see with this darling uh, young girl kind of showcase. This is a pool noodle, by the way. They cut a they cut a big um, uh, line in the pool noodle and then they put these pictures up and they took a photo booth with it. But the parents prior to coming to the strengths night took their strength assessment as well. And they would come and share what they have in common or maybe how they're different than their students. And of course we had a parent spend a coin and a, um, and a student spend a coin. And so we could see similarities and differences. Um, I also wanna say in here, as I'm sharing some of these resources with you, you all, there's 41 of you who are in the space here, probably have some amazing ideas as well. And so please feel free to use the chat as a way to share resources with each other. Um, you can see here, we're sharing a couple of different um, ideas for, again, in classroom or parent-teacher conferences, or even things that you're, um, you're doing to host different kind of, you know, fairs or after-school activities. But here's the spend a coin one where, after taking the Thrively Strength Assessment, students will identify their top three strengths with a blue dot sticker to what's strong with us. And we like to say at Thrively, what's strong with us, not what's wrong with us. And this board becomes fuel for a conversation about that dynamic learning and the importance of showing up with your strengths, the importance of leading with those. And then we move into activity number two, where my strengths, my champion strengths. So think about like March Madness when you have a bracket. We're going to use a tournament bracket. I'm going to show you this in the next slide where they match their top strengths against one another to think through which strength is most valuable to them for that day or for that week. And this can also help them with um, problem solving. It can help them with goal setting. So as we start to think about leading with our strengths, which one do we want to lead with in certain situations can be a way that we use our, our champion strength activity. And then I love these badges. Uh, we have these in PDF form. Again, if you fill out, I know Madhavi just added um, the link, uh, the Google form link. 
If you fill that out, we'll be happy to send you um, a lot of these resources there. A lot of them can be laminated, but the strength badge is uh, included in the toolkit. And you can see this student kind of colored it. She put her strengths on there. She personalized it to herself and then she wears it around her neck. And this was at the um, strengths night that she was attending. So lots of really great um, ideas about how to just really lead with strengths. So I wanna see. Um, Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, Madhavi, would you repost the link for Dorothy? That'd be great. Thank you. Um, so kind of moving on, as we look at um, some of the personalized activities that are inside of Thrively. So I've given you a lot of offline opportunities. We have a whole menu of offline opportunities that you can use, again, in your classroom or um, after school. But the personalized activities that exist inside of Thrively really are driven by knowing who our students are. And so as we look at these different personalized activities, these are all playlists. And the way that we uh, use playlists in Thrively is similar to if you think about Pandora or Spotify. I put a bunch of songs inside of a playlist. Well, in this case, we put a bunch of lessons inside of a playlist. And just looking at these, what do they all have in common? Um, what do you see that in, in the sense that we've got a vision board for six through 12, we've got daily dose of creativity, we've got digital literacy, and we've got a my identity playlist. Um, inside of these playlists are all opportunities for students to kind of go deeper into things that they're interested in. And I'm going to um, just stop sharing my screen and pop over to our Thrively uh, dashboard here for a moment. Um, and just kind of show you inside the dashboard and what, and for some of you who have um, obviously used Thrively before, you are very familiar with um, how this works. Let me stop sharing here for a moment and jump over into our dashboard. Okay. So here you'll see that when you come into the dashboard, we've got a number of different ways. And, and for those of you that don't have a current account, you can log on to Thrively.com and make a free uh, account. All of your students can take the strength assessment um, for free. Okay. So you don't have to have a pro account to add students and to have them take the strength assessment. And I'll get to the Q and A in just a second. Um, but I want to show you, you know, here's where we can kind of go to our dashboard and we can see who's taken the strength assessment. We can, you know, look at the breakdown. This is a wonderful view right here of being able to see, you know, in my, let's look at my one class here. Oh my gosh, I have 18 students who are analytical and I can see who those students are. Um, I can also, maybe if I'm looking for a leader or I'm looking for somebody to, to lead a group, I can see who has a strength of leadership. And so I can really break down this strengths so that I'm making my groupings happen in a, in a, uh, with intent. But then I come to the enrichment and I go to playlists. And as I start to learn about my students and I come into the playlist library, I can type anything here. So for example, if I want my students to really, you know, work on their empathy, I'm coming into empathy and understanding. And now I have a playlist that's already custom designed around this idea of empathy. Um, you can see that we can delete lessons out of here. We can add lessons to it. So it really is a personalized space. Um, so making sure that we allow, or, or I guess are very intentional about letting kids know that we are designing and sending out lessons to them that are in alignment with things that they're interested in. And we'll come back into this dashboard in a few minutes to really look at pathways too. But I think this is a really important um, kind of piece to think about is that sometimes we send out playlists to a whole class, which isn't a bad idea if that's the foundation we wanna set. But you'll notice inside of Thrively as well, you know, you can start with just a basic, let's understand our strengths. And let's get to know each of our strengths. And so that's called the 23 Strengths Playlist. So these are really available to you all just to make sure that um, everybody has access to um, lots of different types of ways that they want to um, give students access to this. So let's jump back into our, our presentation again. There we go. Okay. So what they all have in common is that they're personalized. We can, with the gear feature right there that you see in each one of these boxes, we can send it out to a group of five students, 10 students, or the whole class. And we can make sure that we really personalize their experience in terms of getting to know themselves a little bit deeper. Now here's the um, champion strength we talked about. And this is in the um, 
in the presentation. So you can download the Strengths One pager. You can fill out your own champion strength. You can use this. Uh, these are ready to go for tomorrow. So we'll make sure you have access to the play uh, to this presentation. But what's really great about this is you set the intention maybe at the beginning of the week with their top four strengths. And then you talk to the students a little bit more about which strength that do they want to lead with. And they start to set a goal around that. I want to use my verbal strength in order to, and then X, Y, Z. But they can also take this home and play it with their families. Um, and like we talked about, so as I fill this in, I'm starting to think about, well, I think between resilience and focus, I really need to use, um, whoops, I missed. I really need to use resilience this week because I have a bunch of tough stuff coming up and I'm going to explain that. The other piece of this that I love, and this is really um, useful, especially for those of you that are coming up on parent-teacher conferences. So as I mentioned, every student can take the strength assessment. And as you see here, Anna Escalante took it and it says, you are focused with an analytical mind and nice flexibility. This is given to her as soon as she finishes the strength assessment. Then you can see where it says focus analytical flexibility. She can look over here with the strengths roadmap and start to see, well, what does that mean? Because if I'm going to think about using it, I need to understand what, what it means to have focus. So her number one strength here says, those with the focus strength have a remarkable ability to sit quietly at a task, persevere through repeated struggles, and filter out distractions. Boy, she's somebody I want to have on my team <laughs> if I'm working through a problem, right? And she can celebrate that. And so imagine doing that um, activity where she's setting the intention of being being the leader in focus this week. And you can put those around the room and people can go to Anna to have her help them with their focus or what have you. So you can imagine how this can really bridge and, and build some uh, community inside of your classroom. Now, I want to just pivot for a second off of strengths, because certainly as we start to think about our strengths, we're thinking about using those strengths for education and how we're going to get through our educational experience. But ultimately, we all know as adults, we use our strengths now in the careers that we're looking at. And so there's this really nice bridge as you start to get, you know, beyond the fifth grade years where we start to look at careers and opportunities. And this is what I talked about with exposure. So if you are hosting a career fair or you're bringing industry partners in to talk about projects that you're doing, it's really useful to come back to those strengths and make sure that they're aligning with um, talking to the industry partners about this. Hey, what strengths do you use in your job? What do you think is important to have? And this kind of helps, you know, students, I go back to what they think they want to be when they're younger. And maybe it's, it's about exposure and learning about other industries that are out there and realizing, wow, my strengths are actually really useful in this industry. And I use the example of computer science because I think I missed the boat on this one when I was being raised. Um, I love breaking apart problems. And, you know, when I became a teacher and started getting into computer science, I realized it was an aptitude that I had. But growing up where I did and at the time I did, uh, females were not exposed to it. So I think we have to always consider the exposure piece. And Thrively wants to do and help you with that. And so as you start to look at your students, what they think they want to be, what their um, interests are, and what their strengths are, we can start to expose students um, in the Thrively dashboard to different things. So this is an example. We have, you know, an architect or a biochemist, and I'll show you inside the dashboard in a second. If you open up the pathways, you can see on this bottom here, it's like a learn a little bit more about the life of a chef. And we can watch these videos. There's lots of videos for each career. So as you think about sharing your content, um, inviting the parents, maybe the parents have a skill set. Maybe they're an architect or a biochemist and they come in to talk. Um, they can start to share how they're using their strengths in those environments. Um, and so let me just, again, kind of pop out here and, and switch into my other screen for a moment. Whoops. Gotta open it up again. So here, if you have an account already, I want to show you how you can find. So again, under enrichment, we're going to open up this tab and we're going to come to pathways. And under the pathways tab, there are hundreds of different careers. So let's just pick 
archaeologist. That sounds like an interesting one. So let's learn a little bit more about being an archaeologist. We can see there's we have something called the Ryasek assessment that allows students to kind of understand what personality types. So an archaeologist is investigative, realistic, and artistic. Um, there's some education information here for those of you that are counselors or people who look at the ONED information. But really, students spend a lot of time here looking at the videos, day in the life of an archaeologist, or how do you become an archaeologist? So you can see that we've got a lot of videos in here that students can digest and understand and maybe start to fill out presentations or like those career fairs that we talked about, being able to come back and investigate those. So again, under this enrichment tab, you'll find playlists, lessons, and pathways. And I think that's a really great opportunity to really bring your community in and have those conversations. Again, depending on where you are, you know, in the country, there's certain industries that are very, very, um, uh, you know, powerful and, and useful. So let's see. Um, okay, good. No more questions on that. So if you do have any questions, please um, share them with us. We'll come back in. Oops. Let me stop sharing that screen and we'll come back into our presentation. Coming back into our presentation here, let's make it a little bit bigger and we'll share the slideshow. And Madhavi, if you wouldn't mind putting in um, the uh, presentation for all of those who have joined us today, then we can share this out. So um, I did mention, again, as some of us are thinking about careers, thinking about strengths, thinking about students engaging in the learning, um, we do also, under that engagement tab, have the opportunity to engage in relevant projects. And so you see an example here, 21st century journalism. Uh, we have building a business, games and toys. Um, and then there's a career exploration project as well. And so um, what's really great about these is you, again, personalize this for your students. I have a bunch of students who are interested in journalism or interested in Legos in this case or, or gaming. And so you can really send out these um, individualized projects for the students. And again, bring in the community. You can invite those industry partners in to support the project, whether it be in the classroom, through Zoom, Maybe you invite the parents in because you know one's a journalist or, you know, they have some entrepreneurial things that they can share. And as they start to, you know, engage more in understanding what we can do in Thrively, you start to really see the parents um, getting engaged in understanding, um, you know, how they can support it. Now, I mentioned we do have two other assessments uh, that are quick and, and um, kind of easy to, to administer. This well-being check-in, it's really a... 60 to 90 second um, uh, check-in. You can do it daily. And you can see some of the questions on here. Let's check on how you're doing today. Because remember, as we start to talk about strengths, we're always leading with those strengths, but sometimes things happen, right? So as these questions are showcasing, it's like, I've been active or I've been waking up feeling rested. I've been thinking clearly. If our students aren't thinking clearly or aren't rested, we obviously need to know that. And so if they're not feeling great or they're not functioning great, we can always kind of intervene. And those of you who might be working in the counseling realm um, definitely might be thinking, oh gosh, this is useful to be able to understand. Because if we need to do a Maslow's Before Blooms kind of check-in, this is a great way to do it. Um, we also have something called the HOPE Index. And this is um, really not new research, but it's been um, kind of brought to the attention. Dr. Rick Schneider back in the 1990s quantified hope. And hope really boils down to agency and pathway. So for those of you that are looking for some goal setting and some things that you can do around careers and, and setting goals around careers, start with hope. If our students aren't hopeful, if our staff isn't hopeful, then we need to do some things to really get back into that. Can I see the path towards my success? Can I have agency over what I wanna do? And here's some of the questions that populate here. When I have a problem, I can come up with lots of ways to solve it. I can think of many ways to get the things in life that are most important to me. And you can see it's a Likert scale, so you just slide it. I can think of things I've done in the past that will help me in the future. And then the students can also write uh, where it says, thanks for checking in. Um, it can talk a little bit about. And then if we start to see that there's anyone who's low, Again, our counselors and our mental health professionals can, can come in and help support that and make sure that they're ready to learn. So all of this comes back to, obviously, we want students to have a positive learning identity 
We want them to lead with their strengths and we want them to feel like when things happen out there in the world or at home or with friends, that they have someone to turn to to talk about strategies to help them. So Thrively really um, wants to give you guys and empower everybody to um, to lead with strengths. And again, if you filled out the, the poll that we've sent out, we're going to be happy to send you not only this presentation, but lots of resources on how to lead with a strengths night and how to make sure that you're leading with strengths in, in your classroom. So our first step here is to develop, to make sure you create a Thrively Educator account, um, thrively.com. Go ahead and choose, I'm an educator. And you can use just a Google single sign-on. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, if you do have the opportunity to introduce us to your principal or anybody at the district office, um, we'd be happy to you know, set up a demo and make sure that they understand all the things that are possible here. Um, and we'll certainly be looking at giving you some uh, some freebies on that one. So um, as we kind of close up for the day, and I, I'll certainly stay on for a couple of minutes to make sure we answer any questions, but I think all of us know who are here that building relationships with our young people and our community and our families really make us all be stronger. When we clearly identify where we're going and we send that communication out to everybody, um, it, it kind of cuts down on some of those barriers that come up. And so, you know, the client I was speaking of, um, she always shares with us after those strengths nights, she said, it's the most invigorating time that we have together as a community. She's like, if I could run one of these every month, um, I just feel like, you know, just everybody comes together. So we're happy to send out a lot of information about that, but certainly take um, down our email address, thrive at thrively.com and reach out and let us know if you need anything. Um, we're here to help support you in some of your endeavors and, uh, and obviously to support you in um, all that you do to build healthy, amazing human beings, um, not only that are, are ready for careers, but that are ready for jobs that have don't exist yet. Remember that. So uh, thank you so much. And please let us know if you have any questions. I'll stay on for a minute or two to answer any questions and, and certainly share resources with each other. If there's something you do in your classroom um, that's worked, uh, please share that out. That would be wonderful. Oh, thank you, Joseph. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad. Alicia, we'll, we'll make sure the... Um, oh, good. Thank you, Madhavi, for putting the presentation in there. Um, you'll see a lot of those are clickable links too. So please feel free to, um, as educators do, we, we steal and give credit and modify. And if you modify something and it's really good, please share it back so we can share it out with more. But thank you again for everybody for all you do. It's a pleasure to be with you every two weeks. In two weeks, we have a special treat. Uh, we're going to be talking about skills and computer science. So if you know people in your uh, communities that um, are teaching computer science, if you have people at the district level that are interested, please join us in two weeks on Tuesday, uh, 6.30 Eastern time, 3.30 Pacific time for um, a launch of a couple of really great modules for teachers and some amazing student activities as well. And again, have a great rest of your week, and we look forward to connecting to, uh, with all of you uh, in the near future.